I slaved over this song at least eight to 10 hours a day just because I, I was obsessed with the feeling of this song. Charlie XCX's Move Me, one of my favorite productions ever. I, already know I'm go I missed you guys. I missed this. Sh this sh is so fun. All right, all right. Enough of that. We all know what really matters, the production. <laughs> this whole song started with a splice loop. We have to shout out Decap for the original drum loop, the basis of the whole song. I think what I did was I cut his hats because I love the placement of Decap's hats. I wanted to mention this. I even wrote it in my notes. I used to have this arrogance about just using a splice loop as is. I started to think, am I letting pride or ego get in the way of a potential creative moment. Eventually, I resolved that it was ridiculous to feel that way. The only person that knows I've used that loop a ton of times, I've done that vocal process a ton of times, is me. What if it's a really good idea and now I'm just not going to do it because I did it before on those other what, that no one heard? That's an example of pride getting in the way of something potentially awesome. Could you guys stop talking so much? Jesus, can we just get to the breakdown? Don't worry, Soul State's going to edit this. So let's go through some of these uh, drum elements. So there's two layers of hats. Ducking going on with the hats. Pretty, pretty severe ducking, but my favorite. Yeah, gosh, what is that guy? It's barely a live rim shot, but I've really fallen in love with putting crystallizer on, on drums. This one's just, I think it's delaying it by a little bit but it adds like a nice room to it. Oh yeah, midside's great. You guys ever use midside? Look at the little guy right here, see him? Really cool for controlling your space. What's this guy? A little like over compressed texture. Very, it's very subtle. It's 14 dB down. This time that snare echo is reversed, which I love. It's a way to give a little bit of rhythm into the next part, you know, since it's like a very open space. I love echoing shit out like that. Oh, you know what I printed it for? Cubase has these great curves on their fades. So I wanted to get that, you know? It's down three dB so that when it finally does get to the one, it actually goes Doom, you know, instead of just yeah, I need more coffee. Okay, here, here's something cool. Evagen did this with a guitar pedal, and it's going throughout the entire song. And there's these like little blips of sound. It almost feels like they work with the song. And then you get this like explosion, you know. So dope. Hey, actually, this is a big thing. Like everyone's always, always obsessive, like a, a thing, you know, when you're learning how to do this shit. And still today, like I'm always obsessing about a certain thing. And the thing I'm obsessing on right now is hiding synths in vocals. I wanted like a one word to stand out. Like I love that little note. This isn't a reverb throw, is it? No, it's not. Okay, good. Because that would have been... Okay, so at first I tried a reverb throw and then I was like, that sounded cool, but like, what if I just put a synth playing a note behind it? I'll make it really loud so you can hear it. Even when I'm you don't even know. Hiding synths and vocals, really fun. Oh, this has some dope shit. Little producer flex. These are all Nexus pianos. Ah, oh, hell yeah. The bottom of a trash can. I used it in a Britney song once. So sound shifter, micro shift, Valhalla super massive and lossy. But basically I'm automating the pitch to go down. Stick it again. So a frickin' eighty dur. Some of these arpeggios are so sick. It makes the whole vibe of the verse for me. How sick is that? Without it, it's, it's scary. But with it... It's like, what's going on, man? What, 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 what 
is that? I was basically just playing. Whatever, I just moved my hands really fast. A lot of the problem with these songs, uh, I mean, this one's, you know, 70, 140 BPM, but it's halftime, right? So, like, you don't want it to be sleepy. When you're down at a tempo this low, stuff like this is a way to get tempo without using drum elements, you know? Has a lot of, like, rhythm. Oh, yeah, one of my favorite parts. This has to be Nexus. This sounds like Nexus with OTT, like on full max. And this is a, a good thing that OTT is good for. You can get information across at low volume, right? Because it's completely expanding and compressing whatever you put it on. I mean, when you use it at 100,000 100, million percent. So it makes the, the volume like completely equal. You know, you can get away with putting something like this very low in the mix and still getting a lot of it. Good like for atmospherics and shit, you know? I guess this is kind of an example of hiding a synth or something in a vocal. You know, I'll take the word move and I'll drag it into pad shop and I'll create a patch that makes it sound like. So it's like the ooh of the move. And then I do the same for the me. So I have. I don't know. I love doing that now. It's such a fun way to accentuate words. This thing is one of my faves. It's called Ready or Not because it reminded me of the Ready or Not, here I come, the synth in the background. Like it had that, it gave me that vibe. And that synth is cue everyone making fun of the fact that I use contact. If you know how to use it, it's really great. There's some really cool shit in the pre. Let's go through this stuff. Oh, a lot of this is pitch map. This is some lame Nexus patch. And all three. This little guy. And then we also got... This sounds... I fuck printed it but it's Valhalla Shimmer reverb on the main vocal with LFO tool doing one of the trance gates. Yeah, man, maybe it's like a little secret subtle rhythmic guy. Yeah, okay, let's get to the vocals. Obviously Charlie and slayed that sh You know, she recorded the 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 vocals for this song on this microphone standing right next to me. She's so good with like when she gets loud, she like backs off the mic and it's like natural to her. And she does it. It's she's like a real life compressor. Instead of like those weird singers are like, <laughs> why is everything called flume? <laughs> oh, right. Granular synth. something sacred. I just took the end of the word. Cred. I'm dragging that word in here. So here's where it gets really fun. I can make the, I can randomize the duration. Wow. It's like an alternative to a reverb throw. Also, one of my favorite things about this vocal, it's a dynamic trick using spatial difference. Surrender, give you everything I got and let you know. You're close to the vocal. It's just you and her to the group, back to you and her. So like right when the something about the way you comes in, both these verbs, you can see the envelope fade in. I mean, let's see. Let's see what the difference would have been. You know something about the way you move. Yeah, that shit, man. You know something about the way you move. You're violating space a little bit. In this song, there's this woot. You could never have guessed where it came from. She hit a note when she's like, let, let you know. Like sometimes, you know, your vocal does that. And like I stretched out. You know. It happened in Melodyne by accident. It was just such a hype fucking noise. These decisions I know are the decisions I'm making when I'm, I've been working for, you know, six hours straight. Like, 
And now I'm just like, yeah, it didn't matter, bro. Wait, what's this? Such a Skrillex move. I guess you could consider this like chorus progression, like each chorus having one more element. Like the first one had the echo. And then the second one had that echo, but it had underneath it. And the... So this is a little Alter Boy. The format is the same, but the pitch is up, up an octave, and the drive is all the way up. And you get... I forgot about double time vocals. Second half of the second chorus, I was like playing around and I double timed the individual words. It's really simple. Ba, D. When I sent it to Charlie, I was so scared because it felt so experimental at the time. And Charlie was like, yo, that fucking shit is dope. And I was like, yes, I knew you would understand. Very behind the beat. You can see how behind the beat those hits are on the plucks. Right? Because it would be sharing a beat with the drums, you know? Or maybe you get a little more of it. Because it's behind the, the drum by a little bit. Oh, here's a good example. On the double time vocal, guess what's behind it? That's right, it's a synth. I'm gonna turn it really loud so you can hear it. Hiding synths in vocals. <laughs> Hard as fuck. Pretty, pretty simple guy. What accent is that even? Swedish? Pretty simple guy. God, I gotta stop doing accents.